The tradition of petitioning Parliament to complain of local, personal or national grievances was long cherished as one of the historic liberties enjoyed by English subjects and can be traced back to the 13th century. During the early 19th century, particularly after the end of the Napoleonic Wars in 1815, there was a dramatic expansion of popular petitioning. Between 1784 and 1789, there had been 880 public petitions to the House of Commons. Forty years later, the figure for an equivalent five-year period was 24,492 petitions. Petitioning campaigns were increasingly organised by pressure groups, who sought to mobilise public opinion behind their demands. The broad appeal of petitioning was reflected in its use by a diverse range of groups, including political radicals, religious dissenters, disgruntled agriculturalists, Irish nationalists, ultra-Protestant Anglicans, and the urban working classes. As a political tactic, petitioning could be both disruptive and effective. For example, one of the reasons for the success of the early 19th century campaign to abolish slavery was that activists deluged Parliament with thousands of petitions. These were presented in the Commons Chamber, which allowed sympathetic MPs to raise the issue incessantly and hold up other parliamentary business, forcing the issue onto the agenda. A number of leading politicians, including Sir Robert Peel, the Conservative Party leader, feared that the huge increase in petitions and speeches on them would make Parliament's job impossible. In 1832, Peel chaired a committee that recommended restricting the rights of MPs to speak on petitions in the Commons Chamber. Instead, all petitions would be referred to a new permanent committee that would systematically record their details, including the number of signatures. Although radical MPs complained that the new procedure meant that the people's voice was no longer heard in Parliament, many others thought that the reforms were a regrettable necessity if the Commons was to be able to cope with the growing demands made of it by an increasingly complex, industrialising society. The procedural changes did not discourage petitions to the Commons, and the tide of petitions on religious, social, economic and political issues showed no signs of abating in the Victorian period. Indeed, across the period from 1780 to 1918, over one million petitions were sent to the House of Commons. Famously, in 1842, the Chartist campaign for democratic reform produced a huge petition, more than six miles in length, and containing over three million signatures. It was so large that it got stuck in the doorway to the Commons Chamber before being presented. The following year, there were almost 34,000 petitions sent to the Commons. The free trade campaign against the Corn Laws, which protected British agriculture, generated thousands of petitions and millions of signatures each year in the same decade. Despite the continued popularity of petitions, some people, including MPs, doubted whether they truly reflected public opinion. It was commonly alleged by critics that petitions were manufactured by pressure groups using a variety of dubious tactics, including forgery, misrepresentation, and landlord and employer pressure to boost the number of signatures. However, in such an open and accessible form of political activity, a degree of fraud was probably inevitable. The 1848 Chartists petition famously contained a large number of signatures under false names, including Queen Victoria and the Duke of Wellington, a fact that was ruthlessly exploited by its opponents to discredit it. This ignored the fact that the petition contained at least two million genuine signatures, an astonishing figure which represented roughly one in six of the adult British population calling for democratic political reforms. This also illustrates that petitioning was vitally important for allowing those without the vote, including most working men and all women, to participate in politics and to make their views known to Parliament. Many petitions were the product of public meetings or worked up through door-to-door -door canvassing. In such cases, individuals were probably free to choose whether to sign or not. Petitioning continued to be an important feature of later 19th century politics and was mobilised by suffragists and suffragettes in their campaign for the vote for women. Thereafter, the number of petitions per year declined dramatically, although the practice has seen something of a revival following the introduction of online petitions. The UK Parliament Petitions website enables members of the public to create and support petitions, with any reaching 10,000 signatures triggering a formal government response, and those with over 100,000 being considered by the Petitions Committee for a debate in Parliament. One of the largest petitions of recent times was the February 2019 petition, 
calling upon the government to revoke Article 50 and remain within the European Union, which garnered 6.1 million signatures. While this successfully led to a debate in Parliament, it was unsuccessful in its aim of stopping Brexit, for which 17.4 million had voted in the 2016 EU referendum. While modern online petitions have many positive qualities, being one of the most accessible channels by which citizens can communicate their wants, needs and values to Parliament and the government, they are not without their flaws. As Karis Gervin writes, if individuals simply state, rather than deliberate over their views, these preferences are, according to deliberative democratic theory, likely to be less considered and informed. But then, that's what they said about the Chartists.